this week on DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon. Real guy are tough, they're big, they have fantastic eyesight, and at the first sign of danger, they're gone. When you see an old guy bull, there's a pretty good chance that he's already seen you or he's gonna see you very quickly. DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by DSC, Conservation, Education, and Protecting Hunter's Rights. And by Ruger, Rugged, Reliable Firearms. Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable. And by Trijicon, Brilliant Aiming Solutions. Hunting Neil guy in, in the southern part of Texas, particularly such as we're doing here with Wildlife Systems, which is pretty much owned by Greg Simons, a dear friend who also happens to be a wildlife biologist and former president of our Texas Wildlife Association. When you come down here, this is one of the few areas in the world where you can hunt Neil guy antelope, where there's a population that can support hunting. The Neil guy is one of these animals that doesn't really grow big horns. A really good one, a male, will have horns that are probably about eight to maybe nine inches in length. They have a huge neck in most instances. About halfway down that neck, they have a beard, almost like a turkey. The older bulls have a tendency to turn very dark, almost black, kind of a bluish color. The reason they're called the sacred blue bulls of India. The cows have kind of a kind of a fawn-looking color, and the younger bulls do the same. Now, the beauty of that animal is, is not only are they fun to hunt, they're very challenging, they have great eyesight, they're extremely wary, but once you get one down, You've got a very interesting animal that you can put on the wall if that's what you're wanting to do. But the most important thing as far as I'm concerned about those animals is they're extremely delicious to eat. They're some of the finest venison that you can find really almost anywhere in the world. So it's a, it's a great hunt to come down on as far as the challenge is concerned. We're driving along and, and Charlie sees a bull off to the side probably about four or five hundred yards off the road. And, we're in a situation where he has not seen us, which is so very uncommon. The wind is perfect. We back up, get behind a, a mod of trees, get out and start our stock going toward him.
a little bit of brush right there. A little bit too close to it. No, 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 no. I had too much brush right here to start with. I was trying to get it a little bit above it like you were sitting, trying to push up higher, a little bit to the left. That was a good bull. That was, good. That was a good bull. That's a good dog. Oh, I love this I dog. I love it, by golly. I mean, I could have probably shot him real fast, but I had to shoot him right here, shoot him kind of yeah, up the backside. Around, yeah, but uh, that, that's the way you hunt Neil guy, as far as I'm concerned. This segment is brought to you by Double Nickel Taxidermy. Most time when you come to the deep south Texas to hunt Neil guy, it's a uh, kind of a fairy type hunt in most instances. These ranches are huge, the populations are scattered all over these ranches, and so you spend a fair amount of time in vehicles trying to get from one area to the next, but in the entire time you're out there you're doing that, you're glassing. Very seldom are these animals very close to the road, and the, the, to me the fun in it comes down to in stalking these animals, spotting an animal a long way off and then trying to get close enough to them to get a good solid shot on them. And close to me means less than 200 yards. It's wide open country in some instances, so that stalk can be truly a challenge because these animals do have fantastic eyesight and they are extremely wary. And at the first sight of any kind of human being or anything that they think may be a little bit different than what was there just a few seconds ago, the last thing you're going to see them is where they take off at a run and disappear in the brush or disappear over the next hill. There, there's, there's one right there. Yeah, I see him. See him? Yeah. See his butt? Yeah, I do. Let's go look at him a little closer. Let's go see if we can get on that one. Yeah, he's not going to see the jeep. No. Because he, he just fed behind that tree. Yeah, good. We've got a bull about three, four hundred yards right up here in this thick stuff. It opens up a lot. We'll see if we can get some closer to it. Looks like a pretty good bull. I'll just follow you wherever you're ready, sir. We're still good. He didn't see us. He didn't see us. He's pointing to the left though, isn't he? It's good. He is. He's still got his head down. Yeah. He's, he's about 200 yards. So we need to try to get as close as we can. I agree. Yeah. At least 50 yards closer. Yeah, not a whole lot of cover, but let's see what we can do. All right. You ready? It's a little short. Uh -oh, there he saw us right there. They are so majestic looking at that big old body. There he goes. <laughs> they gotta win sometimes. They gotta win sometimes <laughs> is right. There he goes way back. That was a big bull. That was a big one. That was a really good bull. We just had to live. We were just out in the open a little bit. Yeah. 
But I tell you what, to me, this is the fun of the hunt right here. Pulling the trigger is okay. And walking up to the animal is good. But this, this stalking right here like it is, that's, that to me is what the hunt all is oh, about. And I, I, I agree, I Try agree. Try to get another one. Sure. I'll tell you what, we're gonna have to do, that one right there was one of them big ones. This segment is brought to you by Ripcord Rescue Travel Insurance. Running well, right right down the edge of the fence it, right here. Coming right at us. The property that we're hunting is the East Foundation. The East Foundation was established when Robert East passed away a few years ago and they set up a really a research area. It, it runs all the way from just west of Port Mansfield all the way down to the ocean. The area is set up such that Texas A&M at Kingsville can do a tremendous amount of research here on the native species and the non-native species, along with cattle operations. The East ranches were primarily used for cattle operations. They did not allow any hunting to speak of at all of any of the native species. And, when Mr. Robert East passed away and they set up the foundation, part of the deal was in setting up the foundation that none of the native species, game species or non-game species, could ever be hunted or taken on any of the ranches or any of the property having to do with the East Foundation set up for wildlife management. One of the things I love to do is to call warmints and predators, and I don't go anywhere without a mouthful of call, such as this convergent call. Got an old home place right here. And, cattle pens over on the other side. I hope so, we'll see. So let's see he's in there and we'll kind of tuck in maybe and see what happens and see if we can't get some pictures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. A lot of nil guy in this part of the world. As a result, when they're taken, the meat's removed. It's used by either the, the hunters that take the meat, and sometimes it's donated to organizations such as Trinity Oaks and, the, and a few others. Once that meat has been taken off, those bones are hauled off to a specific spot where they've been doing this for a very long time. So it's an area that's got a lot of bones, got a lot of carcasses there. cattle work. Years ago, this is a research ranch that was set up. There were way too many nil guys, so they shot off a whole lot of nil guy cows to took the meat and then what was left of the bones that they didn't utilize, they brought over here to kind of a bone yard. What I'm doing is nil guy have real dense bone and they should make some really good knife handles or knife scales for like a, a, a sheath knife or maybe even a folding knife. So I'm trying to pick up a few of these bones and kind of utilize those for the kind of get a second use out of them. You know, there's a bunch of them around here I gotta look at.
ASC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon is presented by Ripcord, Canatrek, boots for the trail less traveled, Binodoc, what a cup holder should be, and by Hoffpower Auto Group. Pretty sure he's gonna be right here. Okay. Gonna be feeding that way. Okay. He's gonna be pretty close quarters, yeah. so I'll stay on your right side when he sit sticks up, I'll move to your left side. Okay. I can't, uh, he is, I, I can see, uh, he, I hear him, you hear him breathing just saying, mm -hmm. breathing his last. Congratulations on the nice Thank you, sir. Guy. That's a fantastic <laughs> Neil guy. Not only that, what a great stalk. I mean, my gracious. Beautiful out here, isn't it? He is absolutely fantastic. I'm glad we got him when we did. I've had to pull these glasses off so I can see. It's, it's getting dark. Get dark out yeah. here. Uh, let's go have a look at him. Let's go. You first, you got shells. I'm, I'm on him right here. That is a good bull. Golly, you know what? That's a bigger bull than I thought he was. Oh, I mean, I knew he was good, but my gracious. He's up, well, he's almost nine inches probably. Look at that, would you? Mm -hmm. yeah. They're so pretty in their own way. You know what I mean? Those devil horns. They are so majestic when they, that when you big, see them. That big old neck that they have. God, look at that. Great animal. Oh, you know what? If, if they had 20 inch horns, you couldn't touch them. Exactly. Because <laughs> they're so much Everybody fun. Everybody would want They're one. so much fun to hunt. They are. It's one of the funner things to hunt in North America. It, it is. I mean, I've they're been really very young. fortunate. I've hunted them off and on for a long, long time. And he is just absolutely beautiful. I love the, that beard that they have. Neck skin that is just phenomenal. He's got a little bit of age on him. He's, he's a good, solid, mature animal. Oh no, for sure. He's got. Is he coming way? Well, he comes way down. Well, the the uh, freeze we had about, or not the freeze, the uh, that drought. The drought we had yeah. killed a lot of mature bulls. It did. The ones that are coming back. I remember coming up here or down here rather and finding all kinds of skulls over on the adjoining ranches. That is absolutely beautiful. A lot of the most of the mature ones died, and the younger ones made it. Yeah. This is what we're. What we're now. Pretty shape to them. Kind of cooks back in a little bit. 
Wow. Well, congratulations. We got a, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Awesome. Fantastic. Let's go get the Jeep. Hey, get him loaded up. Hunting Neil Guy down in the lower end of South Texas is such an absolutely great adventure and to, to have had a truly successful hunt in so many different ways. Spent time with, with some old friends, spent time with some new friends. Ate good and was able finally to put a really good Neil Guy on the ground and be very open about it. I can't wait to come back.